we have an opportunity to take this country back and stand up for what's right or just to fall over and let history roll us over. We can either be a people who decided that being conquered was okay because it was too hard to stand up, or we can be the kind of people who would rather die than be conquered. Why am I talking about being conquered? Well, we've got a few days left until either Donald Trump or Kamala Harris becomes president. And one of them, Trump, stands for a lot more classical American values and American exceptionalism and all that kind of stuff. And then on the other hand, you've got Kamala Harris, who is in league with a lot of globalist uh, politicians and, uh, you know, leftist values and things like that. And uh, I've seen some people talking about this and... You know, they either talk about how the economy is going to be ruined under Kamala Harris or whatever else, those kinds of things. But not a lot of people are talking about Islam and why it matters. I just want to talk about that for a minute. I think it matters because depending on who becomes president, you're either going to have a closing down of the border and a restoration of some of the way that things used to be in America, or you're going to have the importation of the third world, which would include Islam. I'm at a camp right now, and, well, this beautiful place has like zero people in it. At this camp, they've got a chapel. And since it's just past 10 o'clock, I just heard the church bells ringing, telling us what time it was. And it got me thinking about the comments that Richard Dawkins made recently over in England, where he said he's a cultural Christian, which I disagree with, because he's been an ardent atheist for a long time and one of the primary haters of Christianity. But he made the very salient point that he preferred to have church bells ringing and not the Islamic call to prayer. And when I was when I was hearing that church bell ringing this morning, I was thinking, what would happen if instead of that, it was the call to prayer? What would happen if instead of a church there, it was a mosque? And instead of the people walking around here dressed like they're Americans, they were dressed like it was 7th century Arabia. And I realize that that's a terrible, but possible reality. You've got this patriarchy that's been going on in America for a long time, built on Judeo-Christian values. And society's been running off that for a long time, and you've got capitalism woven in there and all that kind of stuff. We can look to England as the type of what's going to happen in America in maybe 20 or 30 years, or maybe even before then, I don't know. They've got churches being turned into mosques. We have all of this desire to destroy American values and the traditions that have made America great, but there has to be something in power because true anarchy can never work. So if you take down the patriarchal Judeo-Christian values in America and the system that upholds those values, something else is going to fill that void. And as much as the socialists and leftists would like to think that they could fill that void and finally make things right and finally institute communism, I don't think that's going to happen. Those people are going to get run over by all of the military-age Islamic men wanting to come into the country. In addition to all the other stuff that we have to make a decision about this week that may determine the fate of the world going forward, because America is the last bastion of Western civilization right now, the way that America goes, the rest of the world goes. 
People may not like that, but America's been the world police for a while, for a reason. And we get to choose whether we want to return to the Christian values that we had before, or we can let the Islamic world fill that void, because by birthright alone, it is the fastest growing religion, technically. That's our choice this week, which is a very big choice to make. So we will either be the worst generation in history of America that let it fall, or we might be one of the best generations, maybe the best generation in American history, where we actually stood up for what we believed in and turned the clock back around and pushed away a lot of evil things. In case anybody thinks uh, that I'm not saying Islam is evil, I am. I don't think that particular Muslims are necessarily evil, but they believe in a religion that advocates for polygamy and child marriage and the oppression of, well, not just women, but women, women and men and children. It is a authoritarian religion that tells people they can lie whenever they want to. It says that lying or war is deception. Uh, it was headed up and founded by a guy who practiced child marriage and warring and beheading of people and the actual adherents of his religion nowadays are people like Hamas and Hezbollah. So, being a red-blooded American myself, you can see by my hat, I don't want that to come to my country. Everybody keeps telling young men in our country that you're useless. But I don't think so. I think you are useful, and one of the chief uses that young men will have in the very near future is repelling a bunch of evil stuff. So this is my call to other men to stand up and do something, um, not to be oppressive or violent or anything like that, but I'm saying defend your country, vote for the future of our country and not for the future of Islam. And be a man. It's good to be a man. So, I am going to go enjoy this beautiful scenery. And I hope that you go and experience some nature too. Alright, see you guys later.